Let's welcome on board Sanjeev Basin, who's joining in on the show. And Sanjeev, what happened yesterday? 1,100 stocks, I understand, hit lower circuit. There was uh, quite a bit of uncertainty and nervousness in the markets, in particular for the broader universe. Is this just a shakeout taking place or is that warning beware of the Ides of March running and ringing in your ear? Good morning, Avan. So you, 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 you remembered my caution and that is what Julius Caesar was told. Now, even though we've always been on the bullish side, we had cautioned you that in the mid-cap, be watchful, beware the Ides of March. And luckily now we are coming to the 15th where I think most of the news flow as far as negativity gets priced in. The opinion poll gave a big positive thumping to the uh, a, a reigning government. Uh, we think the uh, you know advanced tax selling may be done with, and uh, there was a lot of fraud maybe on the mid caps, which is actually induced by SEBI's diktat and so on. So I think a large part of that is over. There can be still some residual part which can take place by today afternoon, but I would expect today middle of the day onwards market to stabilize. Uh, Avan, we've had a superb run. Like I told you, this is the time to be in large cap banks. Those are looking good. But I've just realized that copper is at a two-year high, which tells me that China's outlook now is turning more and more benign on the upside. And if commodities and energy start to rally, then that could be another positive for global growth and India included. So we are uh, using this fall to get into some of the PSUs, particularly the metal side, Nalco, Incopper, Indalco. Uh, JSW, these are going to be outperformers, which we think, and uh, some of the oil marketing companies, HP, BP, and ONGC. So that basket now is looking very good. But like I said, uh, there could still be a little bit of uh, a residual part of sell-off, which can take place maybe today and tomorrow for the reasons given. So private banking names, uh, the metal PSUs, the OMC PSUs is something which is still on the buying list. And Mr. Basim believes that probably the worst of the sell-off or the shakeout will be, uh, you know, will be done by midday today. But just bringing on board the strategy notes coming in from Bernstein and Kotak because they don't agree with the view that um, Mr. Basin has. Bernstein says that the reality is that we were in a bubble. It was only the strong macros that were stopping the massive corrections. Maybe we should pull up those graphics on screen as well because the small corrections that we have seen this week and the YTD corrections do not alter the valuation equation. The valuation still remains quite rich. And the investors with high-risk appetites, the likes of Mr. Basin perhaps, will likely bottom fish. But the view remains unchanged that large caps are better and it's tough to generate a large positive return this year and volatility is going to be the name of the game. Kotak also believed that most of the mid-cap and small-cap uh, stocks still, uh, still trade at full to lofty valuations. They're well above their fundamental value despite the sharp correction that we have seen. And they're not sure if the correction marks a reversal of the market to fundamentals and the num numbers away from from sentiment and narratives, many low quality stocks will continue to slide. And that's of course the view that we have also had that it's no longer this rising tide phenomenon that everything will work out. You will have to get very, very selective with your bets as well. But talking about being selective, Mr. Vaseen, seems like there's a negative news flow this morning on the likes of Federal Bank as well as South Indian Bank, where an RBI has stopped the issuance of new co-branded credit cards. What's your view on these two stocks? Will this uh, be a buying opportunity perhaps on these names? Because because Nomura believes that credit card was only 1.5% of the total loan book of Federal Bank in any case, so not a big impact. Correct, Anisha. Firstly, coming down to your uh, large broking houses, they are, you know, what we call uh, Barsati Mendak. Till yesterday, everything was hunky-dory. They missed the mid-cap rally like a wow. And now when they, there is a correction, so the sense sitters will obviously jump in and say valuations are high and so on. This was a bull market, which I'd actually seen a lot of fraud, but that's typical of the markets and corrections will be fast, severe and very fast recovery. So I am not in the camp, which says that there is a, there was fraud and that will be, you know, unbundled, but you will have to see more flows into mid caps and so on. And this is just a matter of time that the consolidation takes place. We still think that select mid caps have a lot of value and there is a, but like you said, we are also preferring the large caps and that is where we are putting our money. On Federal Bank, it is a must-have in your portfolio. All their other, like you said, just 1.5% of their credit card business is co-branded and their other businesses are doing extremely well, particularly the gold loan side, which they've increased the market share and their agri and MSME loans have done well. Plus, their NIMS have been one of the best in the industry. 
So I would use any decline today in Federal Bank to be a buying opportunity. As a disclosure, Federal Bank has been on our shopping list in the last few days. <clears throat> Latest news with respect to the Reserve Bank. And what's your take then on Coal India? Jeffrey's latest note says that the stock is trading at a deep, a steep 57% uh, discount to the Nifty 50 PE and they've got a buy rating. What's the view on how Coal India has been performing? Well, uh, Avan, like I said, the PSUs are just having re-rating of their value. Who thought the valuation of in copper or a HPCL or a Coal India will start to see? And still there is lot of opportunity on the upside. I still think <laughs> given the uh, demand for thermal and the coal outlook, uh, uh, arguably it's in the top five players in the world. And now with merchant coal taking a large part of their share, their margins are only going to see an upside. The same is the case with Hink Copper. It's the only company in India which has copper cathodes. The rest do TCRC margins. And if copper prices are at two-year uh, two highs, this stock can be re-rated anywhere till 400. So we, we have both Coal India and Hint Copper in our portfolio and we would use these declines to systematically add some more. Uh, but like I said, we are more now positive on the energy side. So ONGC, HPCL uh, and Hindalco would be some plays over here. But yes, this energy stroke, coal play, thermal play, these are also looking very, very attractive. <clears throat> energy slash coal plays, metal plays is something that Mr. Basin likes. But since we are talking about metals, we'll shortly get Samanth also to join us to talk to us about NNDC specifically because it seems like there's a sharp fall that has happened in the seaborne iron ore prices across the world. And uh, Kotak now believes that perhaps there is going to be another decline in the month of April. We'll get Asesha to join us shortly. But before that, I want to go across to Kunal and get his view on the likes of Hindustan Copper, Coal India and NNDC. Well, I believe uh, many of the stocks are actually getting into an oversold territory. In fact, I was looking at the uh, slew of PSU stocks which have corrected by the margin of 30% to 40% on an average. And there are a uh, you know, lot many number of names which have actually corrected by a margin of 30 to 40%. Coal India, for example, I think from 490, 495 uh, has come back towards 410, 15 levels. So that itself is a correction of almost 20% for the stock. And you know we are talking of uh, typical low beta stock and a larger cap name in that sense. So I would believe that this could be a very good buying opportunity for traders who have missed out or you know looking to add or accumulate further for many of these names. So maybe another 5% on the downside for these stocks. I think that could be a very good uh, entry opportunity on a contra basis for most of the names that you mentioned, Hindustan Copper, Coal India, ONGC, etc. Okay, and in fact, speaking of, let's get in Ashesha then to talk about these Seaborn iron ore prices. They've actually slumped 18-month lows, lower by 25% in terms of their prices. So, Ashesha, walk us through what exactly is the impact of this. Well, yes, iron ore prices continue to fall. In fact, seaborne iron ore prices are now nearly 25% in the last one month alone. And they've now fallen to 18-month low levels below $106 per tonne. So significant fall in iron ore prices is expected to impact iron ore producers, the likes of GMDC, NMDC and Moil. Now, the key reasons are, of course, weak Chinese demand, higher iron ore inventory levels and lack of cost support. These are the three primary reasons why iron ore prices continue to fall. And as I mentioned, they are down nearly 25% in the last one month to below $106 per ton. Now, NMDC went ahead and hiked prices by nearly 35% in the last eight months. And NMDC's fine prices are at a 35% premium as compared to export parity. Now, higher, uh, higher iron ore prices helped uh, uh, NMDC increase its export sales by as much as 147% in 11 months of FY24. And hence, it is expected to come in as a major negative. Now, Kotak Securities has come out with a very interesting report. They say that the uh, major bulk of volume growth is perhaps behind us for NMDC. NMDC could probably go ahead and cut prices in the month of April 2024. And they also say that a liquid, uh, the, that surplus in the iron ore market is expected to rise in FY25. So very uh, negative, brokerages too are very negative on NMDC. And the fact that iron ore prices have fallen is a big negative for iron ore producers, the likes of GMDC and NMDC. Okay, so NMDC might be under pressure on account of those prices, but the superstar of yesterday was clearly ITC. Right, Mr. Basin, what a stellar show. I mean, despite the weakness in the market, that stock was up 5%, saw long build up, and then the likes of GIC, IPRU, UTIMF, Mira said, Aberdeen, you name them, they bought in the block deal yesterday. What's the view from here on? Do you think the overhang is away and now the stock is in for a, another leg of rally? 
Well, also first let me comment on iron ore prices falling is also positive for steel companies and cement companies because that's a key ingredient in their input. So someone's loss will be someone's gains. And that's why I said the metal composite, copper, aluminium and uh, thing which are mainly dependent on iron ore as an input cost. If those prices fall, they will be laughing in their way to the bank. <clears throat> on another note, I think you forgot to mention HDFC and ICICI Bank, which have been two of my top picks to hide it. <clears throat> I think they are going to lead the next leg of the rally. And ITC, definitely that overhang being over. Now you will hear more on the demerger, if any, of the cigarette business. Because once that reduces its stake, then it's uh, it will be ITC, which will be in a winning position to decide on the demerger. Uh, if you really recall around 500, the 10% demerger of the hotel business was not very well appreciated by the market, hence this correction. And people in the new know of the overhang of this large block deal were aware. That's why the price was available. I still, still think now ITC, HDFC, ICICI Bank are going to be key outperformers. Hence, the view on the Nifty would be more benign. And we think the mid caps will again consolidate stroke language till this over overhang of regulatory and other things gets cleared. But numbers will be the ones which you should be watching out for. Let's connect then with Sanjeev Basin, who's joining in and find out his views on individual stocks. Sanjeev, hi there. Good to have you on board as always. Let's begin by talking about the outlook on Reliance Industries, given that last week it shaved off about 4% or so. You've got Morgan Stanley, uh, who believes that the chemical margins are now showing signs of improvement and they've got an overweight rating here. Yeah, good morning. <clears throat> Awan, I couldn't get the name of the stock. RIL. RIL. Reliance no, Industries. I, I, I couldn't get the name. Reliance Industries, Sanjeev. <laughs> Sorry, but the voice is cracking. I cannot get the name. Maybe okay. better. Maybe we'll come right back to you. In the meantime, why don't I get a chart check, Nuresh, from you on Reliance Industries? What is the chart indicating? So technically, the stock has been trending up uh, the last uh, time uh, we came closer to 3,000, we tried to make an attempt but could not break out. Uh, the previous breakout move uh, started from 2,800 odd level, so that should act as a support now. Till the time it holds about 2,800, uh, it becomes a buy. So at closer to 2,800, now a stop loss is at 2,750 and should be a recovery back to 3,000 rupees ideally. And the last breakout was with good volumes when it happened and a big uptick uh, which happened in the month of Jan. We saw a single day 3-5% uptick. So out here, the drift has been slow and steady from 3,000 to 3,030 levels. So today on dips, it should be a buy with a stop loss uh, below 2,750. Okay, that's the take coming in on Reliance on the charts. But I think uh, Sanjeev is back with us. Sanjeev, we were trying to get your opinion on uh, Reliance Industries, whether this is going to be the one which is going to resurrect the market from that 2% fall that the Nifty alone has had last week. Yeah, good morning, uh, Aisha, you, to you and Avan. Sorry, it was not clear. And uh, how could I miss the biggest market uh, cap stock? But, uh, uh, you know, this windfall tax may put a little bit of pressure. On the other hand, their chemical business is doing very well. And that, I think, is globally there because China's back. And if you see, along with copper, there is, uh, again, demand in specialty chemical, uh, chemicals on the, uh, on the, you know, the, the side of which Reliance does as far as uh, uh, most of their products. So I think they're, uh, aside from now the, uh, you know, the retail and the geo, the actual uh, money may be coming from the oil to chemical business also. And that should be a positive for Reliance because that is where they've invested in the last 10 years and now return on capital will come there. So I think, yes, uh, Aisha, I think Reliance and HDFC will hold the nifty while the mid caps will see some more maybe uh, consolidation, profit booking because of their sharp run up. And because of some of the equalizing, because of the semi dictat the mutual funds and the small and mid-cap uh, holdings. But I still think it's a broader market uh, opportunity to buy. Nifty, according to me, is going to rescale new highs by the first week of April. So this consolidation may last another week. Uh, Wednesday is the Fed uh, policy. I think a large part of that is already priced in. So we think that the end of, February, end of March, first week of February, again, we should retest those 20 to 500 levels on the way up on the index. 
Okay, fair enough. Um, meantime, let's also uh, get in a take then from you as to, uh, Sanjeev, what the outlook is when it comes to the entire uh, consumer sector. Um, given the fact that uh, we are looking at uh, lots of brokerage notes that are talking about premiumization being the next big thing, uh, rural consumption as well picking up, um, what's the outlook on the likes of even a Tata consumer, Varun Beverages, Devyani, Sapphire, etc.? Yes, yes, Avan, I think that's a very sweet spot. And as you can see, the, the demographic premium, the aspirations is now seeing ambition to climb higher. So, you know, it's, a, it's the rural income which have started to consume much more of the branded and premium stocks, uh, uh, products, which has seen, uh, you know, uh, 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 Starbucks and the coffee chain do extremely well for data consumer. We think uh, Costa Coffee is biting into market share over there. So Devyani on the back of Pizza Hut and their other products is doing very well. Same is the case with Varun Beverages. We also like Bata. You know, your shoes and your chappals have to change. And in that, you're also seeing the move from campus to Bata. We like Patanjali over there. So mixed bag. I think the worst of those numbers are already priced in. And if any, you could start to see volumes and margins both expand on the upside. On the... On the on the large caps or the big stocks, I like. Uh, I still like Nestle and Godrej, prop, uh, Godrej Consumer, but Bata Patanjali are two stocks along with Devyani, which I can bet my money on. Sanjeev, uh, the election dates finally are out. Just wanted to understand whether there is tactically any way that you would recommend one plays the PSU pack. Uh, Morgan Stanley, for instance, has come out with a tactical note on defence PSUs. What about the rest? Well, you will have to see that uh, Aisha, they've had the, the best run in the last two years. And any little bit of slip-flop can see large amount of volatility in the stocks uh, on, on the election outcome. Uh, I don't uh, rule out more volatility because the run-up has been sharp. But I still prefer uh, the you know power lenders like RDC, PFC. I like Nalco and Sale in the metal space. And uh, I think ONGC can be my star over there. On defense, I think the order books are strong, but the execution may take another two, three years at, as what the valuation you're giving. You know, you're giving something like FY27 valuation and that justification becomes a little difficult. But we still think this basket of stocks would be some uh, some some of the positives play out. Uh, the, the two other places which you are very positive is construction and hence NBCC and Hootco would be very, very key beneficiaries. Uh, going ahead uh, if the same incumbent uh, uh, government comes back. Okay, another stock that we'll also be watching out for is Coforge. They're set to uh, raise up to 3,200 crores via the QIP route. And uh, that's about 8.5% of the current market cap. Um, a word, Sanjeev, on Coforge's fundraising plans and mid-cap IT? Well, uh, Avan, if you recall, Coforge and Persistent have been two of my, uh, you know, outperforming mid-cap picks all the way from 52, 53. <clears throat> when we said that the private equity has totally exited, there is nobody who owns more than 2% stake in Coforge. And it becomes a very, very lucrative target for uh, someone to, you know, acquire or take a stake. And that is what we've seen the run-up. Plus, I think mid-cap IT has done very, very stellar in the last uh, six months. We heard we prefer now LTTS and LTIM. Given the traction on order book, on defense, on digitalization, both those companies stand to gain. But our top picks remained HCL Tech and Wipro in the large cap. And now we've turned our preference. Coforge was a very good buy around that 5200. We think LTTS and LTIM are two stocks which you should add now and a little bit on decline. We discussed a few stocks, uh, you know, Basin Saab on uh, Friday. And I'm just looking at the list. There you go. India Bulls uh, real estate was there. We discussed Federal Bank and we discussed Hindustan Copper. Let's take them forward. In the India Bull, India Bull real estate up 10%, Hindustan Copper up 4%, and Federal Bank up 3% on Friday. Yes, yes, uh, Nikun, good morning. So, like I said, Federal Bank was unnecessarily the target of that, uh, uh, you know, little bit of caveat by the uh, Reserve Bank on co branding. They have just started the uh, credit card business. So it's not even 1.5% of their business. The stock came out with very good numbers. The NIMS are doing extremely well. In gold loan, they are gaining more traction. So I think Federal Bank, for me, is an outperformer on the mid-cap banks. 
on hindustan copper if you just see yesterday also copper has hit almost a three year high which is telling me that china's cut in output will will see uh, the copper cathode or the underlying asset do extremely well hindustan copper becomes a proxy for that along with the vedanta and hindalco vedanta has copper as a reserve but hindalco does tcrc india bull real estate for me is the best stock of 2024 given that uh, we think the merger date is now 22nd or 24th which from the nclt once that gathers team embassy coming on board 12% by blackstone all that will add up to this being re-rated uh, you cannot have market cap of 5 and a half 6000 on a uh, company which has a huge land bank both in maharashtra and in uh, uh, ncr and the third one was uh, uh, yeah all these three india bull real estate Uh, hind copper and the federal bank as a disclosure these three are in our portfolio and we would use any decline to buy add on these fair point <clears throat> okay i w- i want to be specific here with india bull real estate it's like one of those high beta stocks kunal the problem is that it is so volatile by the time you make up mind the trend changes yeah it's volatile but you know nikhil the good part is that the stock is still confined into a trading range yes it's been a huge underperformer when you look at this with respect to the other real estate peers you know whether it's the formidable ones like dlf godrej properties etc or even the mid cap ones like anant raj uh, and, and many of the other peers in that basket so yes the stock has been an underperformer but you know the good part so far is that the stock is still trading into this 20 25 point range so i think closer to 100 104 you see a lot of support for the stock and just around that 120 125 is that the you know the stock suddenly takes a lot of resistance there's been uh, you know good selling which happens at those higher levels so it's a matter of time and as well as a breakout which potentially could uh, you know lead to the stock into trading to a higher range so i think 120 125 range that's a very critical range to watch out for and i would sense that uh, you know the the more number of attempts the stock eventually makes uh, towards breaking or testing a resistance eventually the break happens so i think i would probably want to watch out for that 120 125 levels and uh, about that i would believe that the stock should be good enough for even 150 plus mm. just checking in on some of the big losers within the broader universe do remember we did see that underperformance take place of the broader markets versus the frontliners and some of the stocks that had it rough within the mid cap space pull up the one week chart or an nmdc uh, which declined nearly 17% you also had bhel which knocked off close to 15% in the week gone by macrotech developers something like a tata chemicals down nearly 14% so double digit cut and sale was the other one that came under pressure um curious nuresh to get in your takes is there more downside in store for some of these names so uh, the one which i track closely is sale that's interestingly placed because uh, uh, the stock keeps going into derivative band and that's where the correction keeps uh, the volatility keeps getting higher for the stock now if you look at sale what is interesting is the fact that the stock at made a top around 145 150 back in 2021 and that's the time where it started moving from 30 to 60 bucks all the way to 145 150 now if you look at the last two months the two tops are around 145 to 150 there is a strong base around 110 to 115 levels so at 120 the risk reward is in favor i would expect eventually to uh, the stock to eventually break 150 levels also so at current levels it's a preemptive buy with a 6 to 12 month view or even a 3 to 6 month view so looks uh, promising in terms of risk reward at current levels all right and sanjeev before we let you go then uh, take us through some interesting recommendations that you're spotting within the entire metal space uh, given that we spoke about sale declining for the week gone by yeah so avan i think uh, indalco uh, sorry uh, hind copper vedanta indalco Hindalco would be the bottom of the order given that their capex on Novellus uh, will see return on uh, capital decline. But I would say Hind Copper, Vedanta, Sale, and Nalco. You make these four as a sip, and you should be doing extremely well. Also, I have a confident feeling that the dollar is going to weaken further. China demand comes back, and their cut in production could see, uh, uh, you know, particularly the non-ferrous ones come back very, very strongly. and in that basket i think copper aluminum should do very well uh, sale as a by product that iron ore has fallen is beneficial both for uh, uh, input cost because it has captive myron and and same for the uh, case of tata steel but uh, these four five stocks should do extremely well in the uh, next 3 to 5 months sanjeev hasib joins in on the show as always sanjeev hi good morning uh, 
Let's first talk about Tara Sands actually uh, looking at that fundraise, pairing stake in TCS. What do you think it implies for Tata Sands? Yeah, good morning. Uh, Aisha, I think it's a routine, uh, you know, booking of profit or reducing stake. And uh, they would be using that capital for extraneous purposes, maybe shoring up capital in other stocks or, uh, you know, as their philanthropic uh, uh, causes do uh, ex exceedingly well. But I think it's part and parcel of the uh, proceeds which they do, you know, systematically over a period of time. Uh, it will be a welcome step in the sense there will be enough people who will put their money where their mouth is. Uh, it should also see uh, maybe a large part of the, uh, you know, a foreign portfolio be in, which should actually be better for the rupee. So I think it's a part and parcel of uh, how Tata Sons manages its uh, resources and how, uh, you know, they are reducing stake in the biggest uh, hallmark company of the Tata Group, that is TCS. We've been chatting also, right, as to how TCS has now climbed up uh, to its life high. You think the stock has stopped out or peaked out uh, for the interim? So maybe from a short term play, the stock may have uh, reached a resistance point. But I don't sense that this is a sign of a major reversal for the stock where, you know, it would probably correct and come back towards the, uh, you know, the October 2023 lows or, you know, the lows prior to that for itself, I would still believe that the stock is, uh, you know, been into a very sturdy uptrend. So the only differentiation with TCS with respect to the other uh, large cap IT stocks or even the mid cap IT pairs, for example, is the way in which the stock has moved up higher. It's gone through a very slow, gradual uptrend. The resistance have been crossed over by the stock price in a very gradual manner. And I think that uh, indicates that when a stock generally goes into a low beta uptrend, even if there are few days of, uh, you see a sudden price correction, the stock has the capacity to try and digest those corrections and then come back again quite strongly. So I would believe that it's a sign that maybe a short-term short, short -term, uh, resistance could be at pay, uh, play, but I think the near-term or the medium to long-term charts still look very, very positive. Meantime, Sanjeev, I was curious to get in your take as to how you're looking at competition now heating up within the paint space. Birla, Opel is pricing their products 5% cheaper versus Asian paints. What do you make of it? Yeah, good morning. Avan, also on TCS, just to come in, you know, in the last five years, they've done three buybacks. And if you did tender in the buyback at a premium and did not buy or stake, then you missed out on huge capitalization. Uh, two and a half thousand, three and a half thousand, four and a half thousand. These were the three buybacks, if I'm correct. And each time the market, after giving the, you know, uh, tendering in the buyback, the stock has been up 40% from there. So I still think TCS is a numero uno stock. And at any price, it's in, it should be a jewel in the crown in your portfolio. On the paint business, yes, now this is going to be part of the parcel because we've seen that as housing and construction and CapEx pick up, Paint, paint industry is going to be very much in demand. I still think there is room for two, three players and particularly the niche ones to gather. For Grassim, it's a win-win point given that, uh, you know, they are using their uh, uh, their other businesses, VSF and other, the, the part of that and cement to, you know, use that as a corollary for paint. And, and uh, diversification is a very, very big key. But I still think uh, Asian Paint Berger will be able to manage their market share. Uh, since the brand is imminently one of the best since decades. And uh, I think that uh, Asian Paint will be continue to be number one in that. You know, they own about, they, they have about 53% market share in the decorative segment. So a little bit of uh, price for may have an initial pull, uh, you know, initial impact. But longer term, I think there is enough room for all three to survive. Um, uh, let's understand then uh, a little bit, uh, Sanjeev, as to how you're looking at the entire power space, given that we're looking at this mammoth shift from coal to clean energy now. How are you looking at some of these power stocks? Yeah, so, Avan, we are very bullish on the power finances, particularly REC, PFC. From solar, wind, and now, uh, you know, Modi ji announcing 1 lakh crore as renewables and solar panels. I think the lion's share of that goes to REC, PFC. NIMS have been the best ever in the history of the company and the guidance which we have from the company's results will be the best ever. And thirdly, state electricity boards receivables are at the highest ever. So, you know, all three dealing, all three uh, parameters work excellent for the power lenders and diversification of business, power being in a surplus position, all work well. On 
on the other hand uh, we also know that coal india has been a stellar performer over a period of time as merchant coal prices have been extremely positive uh, but you know the the realm of thing is that sooner rather than later clean energy green energy all this will play out right now i still think there is a time lag so we would place our bets on ntpc but rec pfc would be our two top picks we think this quarterly results will be the best ever in the history of the company and like i said diversification across the board in all power verticals is seeing very very good uh, upside in uh, 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 on revenues and net interest income and margin okay since we're on the subject of power it surely is one sector that expect uh, that is expected to scale new heights amid rising electricity demand as well meantime then let's get in uh, your take uh, as well sanjeev as to how you're looking at the entire tire space given the fact that you've got domestic uh, rubber prices that have jumped nearly 23% sequentially going to be a key uh, negative for the tire companies because we think uh, sales have also you know reached a peak and if uh, rubber prices the way they have moved is telling us that the commodity prices are here to stay that is why we've been bullish on metals on the china back and we think that that is going to hurt margins you know uh, uh, quite substantially and you've seen the stocks you know particularly mrf apollo cet all hit all time highs so yes profit booking would be the key over there uh, we think this is not a temporary uptick this could last for some time as this stabilizes you could see some pressure on margins because it is not easy to pass on the price hike right now so uh, you know sell on rise would be the key over here book some profit get into some of the better names like we've said metals specialty chemicals those are looking very 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 attractive and some of the large cap banks we are, we think those are outperformers along with that we told you the key lenders rec pfc those are giving you very good entry opportunities after the recent correction sanjeev so let's reiterate for our viewers who are just tuning in what are your top uh, metal and specialty chemical ideas so aisha like i said sale nalco and vedanta are three picks which we have for tata steel it has been a big outperformer uh, we will have to see how the talbot plant coal uh, you know uh, coke uh, shutdown will affect because that will mean that there will be some input cost for for tata steel the next re rating will be as fast as they can you know get a hand on the unions and shut down some of that or sell some of part of the assets of uh, of corus but for us it is uh, a sale nalco vedanta and the jindal twins we think those are the best stocks to buy alternatively buy a mutual fund which has exposure to commodities and metals that could be a real outperformer in the in the, in the near term okay those are some top recommendations uh, meantime what's the outlook then when it comes to the large cap financials uh, sanjeev in terms of your pecking order so icici access hdfc kotak which we are very bullish and we also reiterate that federal bank will be a key beneficiary of uh, expansion of gold loans you know they are now arguably in the top 5 bracket of gold loans and agri and the franchise of liability is doing extremely well as they are the largest recipients of uh, inflows uh, from from the south uh, along with that we think rbl bank is giving a very good opportunity so if you bought a you know four five of these large cap and mid cap stocks i think your portfolio should do just well uh, thirdly we also feel avan that uh, Uh, all the negativity on the ye higher yields and the stronger dollar is built in tomorrow could be the d day for us with uh, you know the fed now seemingly prepared that rate cuts are on the way i think yields and both uh, the dollar are set to uh, the yields are set to fall and dollar is set to weaken which okay. means banks will be in a very sweet spot over the next few months sure okay sanjeev great to have you on the show as always and thanks for sharing uh, your stock ideas as well if you like this video then like share and subscribe to et now